The world of the so-called phablet, the smartphone-tablet hybrid, is growing. No longer confined to super high-end devices with ultra-modern specs, the phablet category now includes handhelds for a brand new type of buyer, the one who wants a huge screen but doesn't need a crazy feature set. Whether this new subtype ultimately succeeds or evaporates is anyone's guess, but it's a market Samsung has put a stake in with its Galaxy Mega 6.3 and one which HTC now looks to join with the brand new One Max. How does the One Max fare in this unproven new category? Let's find out. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is our video review of the HTC One Max. If you're looking for direct comparisons of the One Max to the competition, stay tuned to Pocket Now this week for our usual round of head-to-head -head videos, and be sure to follow Pocket Now at all the usual social media haunts, and subscribe here on YouTube so you don't miss them. To kick off this review, let's jump right into the most obvious and in-your-face of this device's assets, the hardware. It's impossible to overstate how large this device really is. It's bigger than the massive Galaxy Note 3 and oversized LG G2, and it positively dwarfs more conventionally sized smartphones like the HTC One, to say nothing of even smaller phones like the iPhone and the Moto X. The Max is profoundly, ridiculously huge. The kind of huge that requires two hands. The kind of huge that will have everyone asking about the phone when you bring it out in public. And at 217 grams, it's also one of the heaviest handhelds on the market. That's due in part to its aluminum construction, which looks about as premium here as it does on the One. Aesthetically, though, the Max more closely resembles the One Mini, without the edge-to-edge -edge metal and chamfered edges that gave the flagship phone much of its appeal. Now, part of that sacrifice is justified. The redesign allows for a removable back cover, under which sits a microSD card slot, an overdue addition for those who crave expandable storage. The battery is still embedded, but it's also oversized at 3300 milliamp hours, and between it and the camera lens sits HTC's new fingerprint sensor, which we'll talk more about in a minute. On the flip side sits the Max's gigantic 5.9-inch 1080p display, which uses the same SLCD3 technology found in the One and creates a picture that's just as beautiful. These benefits do a lot to offset the Max's few aesthetic compromises. And while we'd still like to have seen less of the Mini's design influence, this is still the most premium-feeling phablet out there. We just wish it was lighter and narrower because using it one-handed is a near impossibility. The One Max is also going to take some grief from spec fanatics due to its internals. The Snapdragon 600 powering the phone isn't a low-end system by any means, but those expecting the higher power Snapdragon 800 or a larger helping of RAM on this massive device will come away disappointed. Fortunately, on a well-made device, specs don't have as much to do with performance as you might think, and insofar as software goes, the Max is a well-made device. HTC has bumped the OS version to Android 4.3 here, and overlaid it with a new version of its third-party UI, Sense 5.5. Now, in terms of performance, the enhancements here are limited. Sense 5 was as smooth an Android skin as we'd ever seen, with little room for improvement. So, HTC has brought upgraded features instead, enhancing its Blink Feed social browser with Instagram and Google Plus functionality, along with RSS support and tighter, smarter integration with Facebook, as well as the ability to remove Blink Feed from the home screen if you so choose. HTC's gallery has also been given an overhaul, making an excellent but convoluted feature of the One somewhat less convoluted on the Max. It still takes a while to learn how to properly build a highlight reel from photos, videos, and Zoe's, but the end result is more fun, because the user has more control than ever before. There's even the capacity to create animated GIFs. It's not as simple as it could be, but the new version of the gallery is a rich, full experience that outclasses everything else out there, and it looks incredible on the Max's giant screen. The picture isn't so rosy in terms of security. The fingerprint scanner on the One Max is nothing like the one found on the iPhone 5S, which performs very well and results in a positive ID nearly every time on our review iPhone. The Max's scanner requires a more precise swipe gesture that's nowhere near as reliable. 
and the scanning window's position beneath the camera ensures you'll be constantly smudging your lens. That also makes unlocking the phone while it's sitting on a table tricky. Yes, you can opt to enter your password instead, but that's as cumbersome as another Max feature, using different fingers to unlock directly into an app. In fact, cumbersome is a good way to describe the entire experience of using a finger to unlock such a massive phone as this. We're really not sure why it's here, and its implementation is weak enough that we sort of wish it wasn't. Thankfully, you don't have to use it. Sadly, HTC has also made no effort to include multitasking enhancements to take advantage of the larger screen. The recent app's view has been given larger tiles, which makes it easier to eyeball information within them, but there's none of the side-by-side -side multi window functionality of Samsung phones, nor even the less functional windowed approach found on LG devices. And while the Scribble note-taking app is actually more polished and attractive than many of Samsung's titles, there's no integrated stylus on the Macs, meaning you're forced to doodle with your finger, which is as unfulfilling here as it is on any other capacitive screen. So in terms of software, the One Max really is just a supersized HTC One. And despite our genuine appreciation for that phone, that's disappointing, especially considering many of these enhancements will make it to the One eventually via a software update. One of the things we enjoyed on the One was its camera. While its 4 megapixel sensor may have produced somewhat noisy, relatively low res photos, it earned major points for including optical image stabilization. With the One Max, we thought we might see a higher resolution version of the Ultra Pixel camera, but instead we got the same 4 megapixel shooter with the optical image stabilization removed. That might sound like a deal breaker, and listen, it is a genuine disappointment, but it's not as bad as it seems. HTC has worked a bit of magic in the new phone's low-light performance, making the Max capable of delivering fairly respectable night shots despite the lack of OIS. On average, they're still not as sharp as the ones, but they did surpass our expectations. Photos taken in normal lighting were also fairly good, though it was difficult to keep the massive One Max steady in the hand while shooting, so expect some blurry photos. HTC has also included its fun filters for on-the-fly jazzing up of pictures, and Dual Capture is also here, for all 10 of you who are asking for it. Video performance is quite good, with rich color and sharp focus, but only average exposure correction and sound capture, especially in loud environments. 60 FPS recording is possible, resulting in smooth slow-mo and played back at 30 FPS, and HDR is here as well for those seeking more balanced videos. Overall, the camera is passable but not as good as it could or should be. Elsewhere, HTC's feature pruning has struck at the Max's acoustics as well. There's no Beats audio branding on the Max, and no Beats software within the phone. But to be honest, we don't really miss it. Boom sound is still here in all its front-facing glory, and though the speakers are the same components used on the One, their increased casing size means the Max generates sound that's much, much louder. The original one set the bar for the new generation of smartphone acoustics, and the Max leaps right over it. That performance shines equally well in terms of voice quality. During our seven days of testing between London, New York, and Boston, the Max delivered rich, clear sound on both ends of the conversation, with excellent noise cancellation. And no matter how hard we tried, we couldn't trip up the Max with even the most demanding games or heavy websites. Those concerned about the lack of a Snapdragon 800 should rest easy, because unless you really need that top-tier SoC, this phone will handle your every need. And thanks to its altered construction, it won't get as hot in the hand as its predecessors, which is nice. We'll have more in-depth impressions on battery life in our full review at Pocket Now, but the 3300 mAh power pack got us through more than a full day of use on HSPA networks at home and abroad. And we're talking heavy use. Ultimately, the HTC One Max is something between a supersized HTC One and an ultra-sized One Mini. But we can't help but wonder who was asking for that. If you're one of the few people who looked at the original One and said, this needs to be bigger, well, the Max will suit you fine. But for the vast majority of folks, this phone is likely to come across as just too big and too heavy to justify its marginal improvements. 
especially considering the compromises it makes along the way. So, while we give the One Max the same score as the Samsung Galaxy Mega, we're still left wondering just who, exactly, this phone is for. Is it for you? Yes? No? Let us know down in the comments below and toss us a like if you did enjoy this video review. The full written review of the HTC One Max will be available at pocketnow.com very shortly. We'll drop a link down in the description when that goes live. And we will also have a full set of comparison videos published here on YouTube just as soon as we can film them. Until next time, this has been Michael Fisher with Pocket Now. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you soon. Let's find out. I'm Michael Fisher. This is Pocket Now, and this is our footy, 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 footy review. Footies, pajama footies.